we're going to use this through the, the whole session and keep, keep coming back to it a little bit. But what I want you to realize is you normally have multiple chillers, multiple pumps, multiple towers. So the question is, how do we pipe? What's the proper way to pipe? In this case, I've got three 500 ton towers. I've got two 500 ton chillers. And just to keep it interesting, I have one 300 ton chiller that we pick for the wintertime operations, kind of a correlate on the building. So we can just get by on the chart. To keep it simple, I'm going to use a 10 degree range, which means my pumps would be 1500 GPM, three GPM per ton on the 500 ton chillers, and of course three GPM per ton on the 300 ton chiller. So let's go back to our example. Let's go back to our multiple towers and multiple condensers that ask you a simple question. How do you pipe? Let's look first at independent circuits. And the best way I know to do this is going to show you a slide. It's going to show you a picture. Here's independent circuits. I've gone back to my example of the three 5 ton towers, my two 5 ton chillers, and one 3 ton chiller. And now what I'm doing is I actually have a separate set of pipes for each one. I actually really have three, uh, three chill plants combined into one piping diagram. That's really what I've got. They're all independent. So as you see, each tower has its own chiller, its own pump. Uh, I guess the things you would say about this, I don't see much of it. No, you don't see much of, much of this because of the first cost. You're running three pipes out to your towers, three pipes back. That doesn't make a lot of sense to people. Furthermore, there's really no standby here. You have no way to switch one chiller to another tower. So we don't see a lot of this. And I think in summary, and I'll give you the summary slide, I think you would agree is, uh, could be the very way, very best way to pipe and easy to operate. Even Chris could operate that. Notice what I'm trying to do is stage it. If I stage on that little 900 GPM chill in the wintertime, it's pretty easy. I just turn it on, turn the other two off. I got no problems. My flow rate's fixed. I'm not worried about many max flows. Everything is easy, so it's, it's easy to operate. It's simple to pipe and balance, but first cost is more. First cost is more. I have no flow staging issues. When I go to stage chillers back and forth, I don't have any issues. It's simple. But no standby. No standby. And I do have multiple pieces of pipe out to the chillers from the, excuse me, from the chillers out to, out to the cooling towers and back, which probably is not going to fly. And to be honest with you, I see very little of this. However, it would work. There's nothing wrong with this. Let's go to a header supply and return, which I think might be the most common way that we see towers and chillers and pumps pipe on the condenser water side. Again, back to my three 500 ton towers, and I've got my three chillers. I've got a 1500, a 1500, and a 900 GPM. So now I've got one set of pipe, that red pipe, one common pipe to all three cells going out with my uh, 95 degree water. And I've got one common pipe coming back with my 85 degree water. This is what I think you see all the time. See the two-way valve at the top of the tower, the two-way valve at the bottom of the tower? You need them both. And those are two-way on-off valves on the hot side and the cold side. So when that tower cell is not running, I would want those two-way valves closed. When the tower cell is running, I want those two-way on-off valves open. And they work together. The one on the top and the one on the bottom of each cell cycles together. Same signal, same thing. Let's keep talking about this a little bit. Now, what have I got? Well, let's see. Summertime conditions, I've got, what, 13,900 GPM through that pipe going out to the tower and 3,900 GPM coming back. But wait a minute. That means i got to pick my pump heads. My three pumps have to be picked for that condition. That's when I have the highest friction loss, the highest pressure drop in those pipes. It's at 3,900 GPM. And in the summertime, I've got to run all three pumps, and each pump's got to have enough head to be able to overcome that. So my pump head is going to be based on full flow, 3,900 GPM through the pipe, and whatever that friction loss is. Now, you've all been taught that, that if you double the flow friction-wise, the head goes up four times. You cut the flow in half, the head goes to 25%. Now, the lift of the constant or the static piece of the condenser with a pump head would be the lift between the whole deck and the hot deck in each tower, which is 10 to 15 feet, whatever it may be. If you have a spray nozzle, you've got to add that in there. In this case, with a cross flow tower, there's no spray nozzle. 
And what is that pressure drop through that condenser? Because I want a constant flow through the condenser. So a big piece of this pump here is constant. The verbal piece is the friction piece, the piece in that piece of common pipe that varies as I vary the flow. So you look at a condenser or a pump head loss calculation, you need to be thinking in terms what piece of that head loss calculation will vary as I stage the chillers, and what piece of that head stays constant if I'm running one pump or multiple pumps. And we all got to change our way of thinking to get that concept in mind. So right now we have summertime conditions, and my question is what happens in the wintertime? I want to run one pump, one 300 ton chiller, one 900 GPM pump in the wintertime. And it's got to go through that same piece of pipe size for 3,900 GPM. So what's happened to the friction loss? Well, the friction loss, let's see, 3,900 GPM was 100%. If I go half times a half, I'm 1 16th. I'm the 1 16th at 900 GPM of the friction loss I was at full flow. Basically, at 900 GPM of flow, the friction hit has just gone away. No habit. Is that a problem? It's a problem with high head pumps because they may run off to the right hand side of the pump curve. They may put too much flow through the condenser. They could erode the tubes to the extreme. What's reasonable? Most condenser water pumps are 60, 65, 70 feet ahead max. And I don't think you have a problem if you get with a pump vendor to make sure you pick the pump properly. We're running in trouble on that. Now, if you've got 100 foot ahead on the condenser, another ball game, we need to slow down and see why it's 100 feet and how much is that is friction. So the question is, and you told a condenser water pump head, stay out of trouble, how much of that is friction? Let's summarize it a little bit, because we've been rambling around a little bit, bringing it all back together. Summary, the, the common pieces of pipe going to the towers and back have to be sized for all chokes at 3,900 GPM. So the question is, how will they operate at 900 GPM? That's the question we're trying to ask. So the next statement is, what is the, the, the pump is required to flow to 900, 3,900 GPM. So you've got to pick your pumps as if you've got full flow to the pieces of pipe at high friction loss. What will the operating problems could be when you run one pump. You may go off to the right side of the pump curve with one pump running with the head pick for the summertime condition. You only got one pump running in the summer in the wintertime and that friction is basically gone away. You might need a flow limiter on the chiller to protect it. You might have to add a flow limiter. Uh, another little comment you're going to learn about ASHRAE 94 and water side economizers, you might also have to add another set of pipes out there. In other words, with one pipe to the towers and one pipe back, you can only get one cold water supply temperature at a time. It can be 85, it can be 65, it can be whatever you want it to be, but it can only be one temperature with one set of pipes. So you've got head pressure considerations for your chillers. They may want water to 70 to 75 degrees, maybe as cold as they want it. But if you're trying to run a water side economizer, remember you want as cold water as you can make. So how do you handle those two extremes with one set of pipes? Last but not least, as a dedicated pump per chiller, and I like that because when I turn the pump off, the flow stops. And I'll show you that again in a few minutes. I've got a dedicated pump for a condenser. And I want to make sure you kind of follow that logic. So here we go. You might note there's a pump per condenser. So if I turn that bottom pump off on my 900 GPM condenser, the flow's gone away. So it, it, I cycle my chillers and my condenser water pumps together. Just turn them on and off together. When I turn the pump on, the chiller has to flow through it. I turn the pump off, the chiller does not have to flow through it. Very simple, but there's a good reason for that, as you'll see in a few minutes. Now, we talked about the fact that if we had high friction loss in a common supply and return pipe, we might have to add flow limiters. So all I've done in this particular slide is added that flow limiter. And that flow limiter is set for 900 GPM on that chiller to make sure I don't overflow that chiller and possibly erode the tubes. That simple. That's all I'm attempting to do. And you see how that works. Now, somebody said, I want to add a little standby to this. Okay, fine. Then I can add a couple of butterfly valves. And I've got more standby available by adding two butterfly valves between the pumps. And now I'm able to swing any pump to any chiller. I've got a flow limiter because I've got high friction loss to make sure I don't get in trouble. And that's pretty much what you're going to wind up practical. Now, one common sense statement would be you do not normally need flow limiters. And we can, we can help you figure out if you do need it, you can always sit down and work out the numbers. But basically, normally you don't need them unless you've got high 
pump heads on condensed water pumps. And that's when you might do it. How about parallel pumping? How about if we pipe it like this? And you see the difference. I've got three pumps together now, pants stay together, with a common discharge to three condensers. Now back it up real quick. See here, I've got a dedicated pump per condenser. I turn the pump on, the flow that the condenser is on, I turn it off, there's no flow. In my new situation, parallel pump, there is a single pipe over to the three condensers. And if I turn one of those pumps off, I still got flow in the condensers. I still have a 9 ohm GPM flow. So now I've got a, got a different set of circumstances. First of all, if I'm going to put three pumps in parallel, I want all three pumps to be the same size. So in this case, if I'm going to have three pumps, I'm going to have parallel pumps. I want each pump at 1500 GPM. Could I put a 900 GPM pump there? Yes, I could. Could I make it work? Yes, I could. But I'm living on the edge. I'm making it complicated. Why? I like simple things. I prefer three pumps, parallel pumps, to be the same flow rate. All right, now I've got no problem. If I cut off the 900 GPM pump, my curtain one pump off, what's going to happen to the flow through that chiller? Nothing unless I do what? I have to add a two-way on-off path. Can you see how I've added a two-way? And another problem might be, and this is Chris Edmondson speaking here, what would happen if I if I valved off the 1500 GPM, the two 1500 GPM condensers with the two-way on-off valves, and I did not have a flow limiter, and I ran all three pumps? You'd be trying to put 4,500 GPM through a 900 GPM chiller, and if you did not have a flow limit, if you did not have a flow limit to listen to me, you would erode the tubes and destroy that chiller. You will erode the tubes out of that chiller. So I'm saying to you, Edmondson's saying to you, you want to, if you're going to pipe them this way, fine. Parallel pumping works great. There's nothing wrong with it as long as you're smart enough to recognize mandatory. I've got to have a flow limiter on each chiller, and I've got to have a two-way on-off valve so that chiller's not running out of valve at all. If you'd accept those two pieces, you're fine. So kind of in summary again, parallel pump should have the same flow rate and the same head on each pump to keep it simple. Mandatory, in my opinion, that you have flow limiters on each chiller so you don't run three pumps through one chiller and erode the tubes. And I have done that personally. I've seen it happen. It's not, I'm not funny. Third, you must have an automatic two-way on-off valve. And that's by code. ASHRAE 90.1 2010 dictates that. that. If you take a chiller offline, you've got to stop the flow through the condenser. And the only way you're going to do that is by two-way valve. Uh, on the positive side, just scrape the standby. You can take any pump, any chiller, any chiller, any pump, and any chiller, any pump, any cooling tower. So it's got the maximum amount of standby. And a lot of the old process engineers love this because of the standby. But what I found is those old process engineers that love the standby know this stuff, and this is what they're doing. They know how to do it. But don't do this unless you recognize the requirement for the flow under and the two-way valve. If you do that, you'll find there's not a thing to go wrong with. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.